Hi, my name is Tom Kelly. Uh, I am a ex-employee of Eagle Power and Equipment. I'm retired, but I came back to go through this machine because this is one of my favorite machines and they've made even more improvements on it since I've been gone. I really like the machine because it has a tall front tire. It has a bigger rear tire. It's a 580 on steroids. It has a 590 cab. It's got 580 front axle and a 590 loader bucket. Uh, very nice package. It's got the 580 backhoe, which really uh, doesn't hurt it at all. It, it, it works very well. Uh, it's, it's, got the, it's got the right feel. It's, it's nimble. And uh, I, really, I really like it. I like the options that they put on this tractor. Uh, you almost see every option that Case puts on. It's on this tractor right now. So uh, I'm going to go through this machine with you, and uh, if you have any questions after this, contact your Eagle Power and Equipment PSSR. The tractor does have a maintenance chart. It is down here, right below the loader arms. If the loader's up, it's easier to see, but it, it does have a maintenance chart. It tells you what needs to be done and when it needs to be done. This is a wide track, which is spec with a 590 rear tire and a tall front tire. On this machine, they also spec Michelin radial tires on it, which as far as longevity is concerned, they will outlast any other tire by two to three times uh, the wear factor. They will bite even when they're bald, better than a tire that's almost brand new. Uh, just like I said, they're, they're really, really the, the, the best thing that you can put on this machine. It is available on all case loader backhoes. It is, it is an option. So it really makes sense to think about it when you're going to spec one of these out to put this tire on it. Uh, depending on if the machine is on the road a lot, these are very well liked by the operator. It keeps the spray down, keeps all the junk off of the, off of the uh, steps. It makes it a little bit safer. So uh, I, I, I do like these on a machine. Everybody is not going to buy them. I understand that, but it is a nice option. With the wide track, you get a taller front tire. The taller front tire, actually is made for more bite in, uh, in, uh, in muddy areas. You'll get more bite with the taller, skinnier front tire. It does have a limited slip differential in the front. But these two wheels will lock up, so you'll get a true four-wheel drive if you operate the differential lock. It has a primer for the fuel filter. It also has an electric pump for the fuel filters, two bleeder screws, and this is only if you run it out of fuel or you're changing the filters. Down here is the engine oil dipstick, engine oil fill, transmission dipstick. Engine oil filter is in the back. This engine also has an aspirator for the air cleaner. That's what this big hose is. Comes out of the bottom of the air cleaner cap and goes down into the uh, fan shroud for the radiator. It sucks all the dirt out. Also up top, we have the coolant and it is oat type coolant. The special coolant, you cannot mix it with another brand, it, this is what you have to put in it. Uh, warranty warranty uh, requires it, and if you mix it, you will have a problem with mixing two different antifreezes. Air filter cap is up top, and I want to be clear, we're doing this with this loader frame down to show you that you can look at and touch everything on this machine without starting it. It all can be done without starting the machine. Grease fittings, a couple of them I like to point out. I don't point them all out. 
I do like people to know about this pivot joint. And of course, on each side, you have the kingpins, which if you grease them, you'll get plenty of life out of them. See that D-ring? That's a machine tie down. There's one on each side. DOT makes you tie down the bucket. That's what this is for. When it goes on the trailer, these are lifting eyes. One on each side. The front of the machine, this machine is equipped with third spool hydraulics. It is an option. It doesn't come without you ordering it. You have to order it. Uh, also in the front, uh, I, I'm not sure if there's an option to put a screen on the front of this, but if not, it makes sense to put a screen on the front of this to keep material from packing. All of these machines have a greasable loader, lower pin on the bucket, okay? Which especially if you're a salt guy, you really want, you really want them to be greased. The bucket is a 590 bucket which is a wider bucket than what comes on a regular 580. It has a 590 front differential, which is wider than a 580 differential. Also has a bolt on edge that can be reversed. These, cup, these buckets at Case Builds, they build them that you need to use a bolt on edge on them. You cannot run them without. You will ruin the bucket. It is cutting edge material, that upper one, but it's not, it's stepped up. It won't, you won't be able to match the, the blade up after you ruin that first blade. Over here on this side, we'll give you a little look here. This does have a flex fan, which it works with a vicious coupler. That is to, to help cool it. Plus, it also gives it more horsepower because it, when it doesn't, when it's not needed, it just coasts. It doesn't do anything until it needs to cool the engine off or the hydraulics off. It does have an adjustment for the belt. No more belt tensioner. Uh, guys used to the old machines; they had belt tensioners. This one does not. This is, has a remote jump. You can jump the machine from this by hitting a positive on here, grounding the, the exhaust manifold or grounding the alternator right here with your cables. Uh, I suggest that when you hook it up to kill it, and then after it's hooked up, turn the machine back on. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, if it was uh, a really cold day, you really don't want to just jump this machine if it doesn't turn over because you could have frozen batteries. And that would be a dangerous, that would be dangerous. These batteries are underneath this cover. Uh, you just wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to jump the machine without knowing that they were at least not frozen. This little switch here is the return to dig. It is adjustable. When I say return to dig, what that does, it determines where this bucket is going to finish on the ground. And when I say that is you want it to return that it is flat on the ground to go into the pile. That is what this does. This can be adjusted. If it's out of adjustment one way or the other, you can adjust it right here. Okay. Uh, I like to point this area out. There is an O2 sensor down here. You hate to see people dump rocks down in here and hit this O2 sensor. Uh, it is for emissions. Uh, you need it. You can't run it without it. So I'm just telling you that it would be better if you just be careful enough not to hit that. This is the hydraulic tank. You have a sight glass right here. This is your fill. Um, you can see it's a little low, but this machine was outside. It was really cold this morning. You've got to give it some time to warm up before we know whether it's really low or not. It does have a toolbox, 
on the side. It probably has enough room in it for a couple chains or maybe a grease gun. Uh, it's not the biggest toolbox that we used to have, but it, it does it does do the job. Usually, uh, guys find that they can get in there what they want. This machine has a hydraulic uh, system in the back to run a hammer or a clam bucket or whatever. You can adjust your gallons per minute right here. Uh, you you want to check this before you put any type of uh, hammer or anything on the back to make sure it matches the flow that they want for that hammer. Okay. Guys like to play with that for <laughs> some reason or another. There are a couple ports here just to check the pilot hydraulics. This machine is equipped with two doors, this cab. Uh, most of our machines come in with one door on the, on the left side. Uh, I, just my preference, I like having the two doors on the machine. Uh, as long as they use this door occasionally so it doesn't seize up, uh, it, it makes sense to have it. It's a good safety item. You can get in and out of this machine out this side because there's really nothing in your way to get in and out. Inside the cab, you'll see this thumb screw. And what that is, that's your fuse box and relays. On the other side, so when you take that off on the other side of it, there is a ledger. It tells you what all the fuses are. So it, wor it works very nicely. You don't have to grab the book out of the machine. Okay, you know something stopped working, you can look at that ledger and you know what fuse it is. Uh, fuses do blow. I'm not gonna tell you they don't. Uh, I wouldn't care whose machine it was. You really like it to be easily accessible to take care of that. Of course, we do have a place to put a fire extinguisher. Uh, this machine does have a hammer kit on it. We had mentioned that before. There's two hydraulic hoses there that you hook your hammer hoses to. Uh, and you set your flow to make sure you got the right flow. Of course, you want to make sure it's going the right direction. Okay. Uh, also, on the bottom of this slide, right here, under in this little, uh, uh, it got like a piece of pipe welded there. There's a grease fitting in there. Underneath this cylinder, right at that last bolt, that's for the slide. This machine has a hydraulic coupler on it. It makes it really easy to take a hammer off and on or change buckets. Uh, it does have a couple of grease fittings here. I really love to point out because people forget them. They make the coupler work. There's one on each side. Keep that coupler uh, working properly. Uh, the nice part about the hydraulic coupler is there's no pin to take out. This pin stays in. This other pin stays in. It comes out this shoe. So you don't have to get out of the machine to take the bucket off at all. What it does require is you have to have it, these pins in the bucket that you're gonna put on or the hammer that you're gonna put on. You need these pin, this pin, this bottom pin in it. The top pin, of course you don't need it because that's in the, in the dipper itself. Because these just pucks just pull in and then they go out. On the, on, the, on the back of this machine, there's two, two ways of picking with it. If you leave the bucket on, you can pick with this part. This is also to tie down the bucket on the machine, on, on the trailer, because they make you tie the buckets down. Uh, also, there's an eye right here that is for, you put a, uh, you put a, put a uh, lifting eye in there. And then you can pick whatever you want with the machine. The nice part is, is with this having a hydraulic coupler, you can get rid of 250 pounds. <clears throat> so you've got that much more you can pick up. Okay, so that's a real plus, having a you know, coupler that you're, you don't have to have somebody pushing a pin out. Around here, this machine, because it has 
a hammer kit on it. It also has a boom guard. You're thinking, oh boy, we gotta, we gotta guard this boom. Well, what the boom guard's for is a place to put the point of the hammer. So that the point of the hammer is in this shoe here and it won't destroy it. Plus it'll keep that where it belongs. It won't drift out or anything like that when you rode it or you put it on a trailer. You can keep that right there. Uh, depending on what trailer you're putting it on. If you're putting it on a, uh, a tag along trailer, you probably would have to unhook it. Uh, on these stabilizers, the stabilizers have these pins. And what those pins are for is when you flip this over, when you flip this all the way over, you go to the dirt side or frost side of the stabilizer. Well, the problem is, is if you don't run this pin, if you don't put this pin in there, when you go to pick them up, there's so much dirt that sticks to them, they'll flip back. And you wouldn't want that because every time you go to move the machine, you don't want to have them flipping back. So you need these pins to hold these when they're flipped the other way. They're just sitting in there when they're, when they're on the asphalt side. This is the asphalt side, the other side is the dirt side. This, this pin here goes in this hole to lock this boom from swinging side to side when you rode this machine down the road. On the, on the dipper, there's also a, a, a set of teeth that you could bring this bucket all the way up and pinch a log or, or something like that in between the bucket and the, and the, and the slide, the, the slide. It also has an option that you can buy another set of teeth that bolts onto the side, uh, top and bottom, and uh, it, does, it does work pretty good to pinch with the bucket. You can lock the brake pedals or you can unlock them. One thing that you need to know is when this machine is coming off of a trailer, those brake pedals need to be locked. It's dangerous to take this off a trailer without them being locked because the machine could go one way or the other and you could get hurt. So they have to be locked when it's on a trailer. Otherwise, when you're on the job, you want to brake steer the machine, you unlock them and leave them unlocked. Right up here is another, it's got a, another fuse box. It has minor things in it for lights and stuff like that. Nothing really major in that fuse box, but it is there. If you need to get power out of there, you may be able to jump in there, I'm not sure. You would have to look in the, in the operator's manual to see if there is a, a, uh, a blank in there that you could use for strobe lights or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to point out what's on this dash on, on this, on the front of the machine. Uh, what you have is you have your shifter, it's four reverse, and it has three gears. It also has a downshift button in the end of it. This top switch is called comfort steer. What comfort steer does is it takes your rotation of your steering wheel and cuts it in a third, which is great for real tight areas. It will only work in first and second gear. Now this transmission is a little bit different than the last one I dealt with, so it may only work in first gear, I'm not sure. But I know it won't work in high, for sure, because the steering would be too quick in high. Then you have your wiper, two-speed wiper, washer, and your economy switch. And what that does is that limits the engine horsepower to give you more economy uh, out of the fuel that we're all burning right now. All right, now we, we have a tilt wheel. Here's the handle for it. Turn signals, left and right, horn, Four headlights in the front, two headlights in the front. We got headlights, 
four-way flashers. This is the ride control, auto ride control. This is the automatic transmission. This machine will shift by itself up and down. The big cap here is the windshield washer. Uh, it's nice that you can fill it from right inside the cab. Also in, in this cab, we have a sun visor. Everybody will look at that sun visor and say, oh my gosh, what's that gonna do? But that is a fantastic option. This is your cabin filter. It's a HEPA filter. It's a very large filter. It runs all the way across. It's for the air conditioning and the heat. Uh, you need to change that filter at the proper intervals because otherwise the air conditioner will not work properly. The dirt will get in the drip tray. It'll clog up and the water will run in the cab. So that's a maintenance item that needs to be watched. This vent right here, that is an intake vent. The only time that vent is to be open is when all of the windows in the cab are closed and doors. Windows and doors in the cab gotta be closed. Then you can open this. If you open it with them, it'll suck all the dirt in the cab and it'll go up in here. It'll make the cab filthy. Okay, this is your loader control. This works your loader. This is a bucket uh, curl and dump and also lift and down. It also has a float. And all the way over this side would be your return to dig. After you've dumped, you bring this back, it'll lock, the bucket will come up flat and hit the ground. Also, this rheostatted button right here, that is for that aux hydraulics that is running out of the loader frame. That's so you can feather your bucket open and closed. Okay, this button right here is your transmission. Forward reverse or forward reverse. This top button is your downshift button and the second button is your differential lock. The differential lock only works as you hold it on. Never use your diff lock on dry pavement. Never, never, never. And never engage your diff lock on a turn. They are a set of bull gears, and when they engage, they'll knock your teeth out, besides ruin the rear. So they're only made for in the mud, the snow, ice. It's got to be slippery when you use it, if you're using them on pavement. Okay, your first button is your four-wheel drive, which can be engaged on the fly, but all the wheels must be turning the same speed when you engage it. It's nice because you can figure out if you're not going into an area where you're gonna need it, you engage it right before you go in. Next button up is to engage this forward reverse on this handle. You hit that button, now your four reverse is here. The minute you touch the left hand four reverse handle, it cancels this one. You, you, all right. Next one is your parking brake. These two buttons here work this dash, this 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 LED dash. And what that dash, what you can do with that dash is you can look for codes. If, if there's a problem with the machine, I hate to label the machine with problems, but every machine now has a way to check the codes. It also, you can set your service intervals in it, and it'll give you a warning when it's time to service the machine. It's really nice if you got multiple operators. Uh, it works out well. Uh, and you can, go up and down to see what service intervals were done on it. Engine temperature, transmission temperature, RPM, depth fluid, 
That's the level of the death fluid. And this is your fuel. Okay? And this, this dash also has a bunch of lights that light up on it. This is your throttle control for the backhoe when you run the backhoe. They do have an economy mode, uh, but this backhoe usually performs a little bit better at the higher speed. But they all perform better at the higher speed, so, but this is, if you're not digging real heavy, digging, this will work just fine. This, this button right here changes your hydraulics for your backhoe. You have dual directional, and you have single directional. Single is used for a hammer, dual would be used for a clam bucket or a thumb or something like that. Right next to it is your bucket coupler. As you notice, that switch is guarded. It's guarded so that you cannot hit it by mistake. If somebody drops a bucket off this machine, they purposely did it, period. This is your economy mode. Up top here are your rear lights. You got two lights, two, a double switch. What the double switch does is it works the rear lights and then the, all the way, it'll work the side lights with it, okay? Rear wiper, rear washer. And then this one here, this switch, is the heavy lift. What that heavy lift does is it'll actually slow the engine down It'll give you full pressure, low flow to the backup. That will give you enough picking power that, that, that it gives you like five to 10% more picking power than you would have normally. This left handle, now you can change what the left handle does with this switch down here. Okay, it can be John Deere control or excavator control, which will change the pattern on these handles. Also, on this handle here, you have the hydraulic control, which is for your hammer or for your thumb, uh, depending on what attachment is on the back. And also it has your heavy lift on this side. On this side, we have your uh, extender hoe. This moves the extender hoe in and out, okay? And this one here brings the engine down to idle and takes the engine back up to RPM. And that is so if you're in the middle of something, you can talk to somebody without the motor revving like crazy or you reach over here to, to slow it up. So it's actually a better way of, of handling it. Just in case you're wondering what this switch is up here, that shuts the wiper off when the windows are down. If you leave the wiper switch on with the windows down and you hit this, you're going to get hit in the nose with a wiper. On this side, this is how you adjust the sticks back and forth. All right, you see what I'm doing here? That moves the sticks in and out. You bring them back to you. Then there's a knob down here and one here. And you can bring these into you if you want them or push them out, okay? This handle, these handles are adjustable up and down, okay? The control is Lit up right here. This is this turns the backhoe on. When you start this machine, this backhoe will not function. You have to hit this rocker switch to make it function. And this switch here changes it from what pattern you have it set for. Okay? Over on this side, you have a set of switches that will put the stabilizers down or it'll auto up them. There's a little detent that you can feel here. It'll auto up the stabilizers and then it'll shut them off after you get it up. The back hoe is locked. This hoe is back over center and it's locked. 
when you put your foot on this handle here, right here, that will unlock the backhoe when you bring the boom back to you a little bit. I can't unlock it now because it's, it's got pressure against it. But that's what this handle, this floor handle does. Okay, these two ports over here are for your phone. Radio, speakers, this, this machine's set up for the radio already. You can set it up for XM if you want it. These vents are all adjustable. In the, in the, in the summertime, you want to adjust these to blow on you. The ones up front that are at the windshield, you close them in the summertime because you don't need the air conditioning blowing on the glass. In the wintertime, you close the ones that blow on the, on, the, on the glass because you want to heat your body. So that's how you manage these vents. Again, thank you very much for watching this video that we put together for you today. Uh, I, hope it, I hope it helped you uh, make, maybe making a decision on this machine. And uh, if you have any questions about what we did today on this machine, contact either your salesman or your PSSR.